One warm evening in late summer, Nora and her brother Nolan had grown curious about the mysterious dog that had been lingering near their neighborhood for several days. The dog would sit near the entrance of their compound, seemingly waiting for something, but it never showed any signs of aggression. Its wide, sad eyes and gentle tail wagging tugged at their hearts. Maybe he's lost, Nora suggested as she crouched down to get a better look at the dog. Nolan nodded thoughtfully. He might need a home. What if we ask mom and dad if we can keep him? Nora smiled, liking the idea. Yeah, let's talk to them. Maybe they'll let us take him in. The two siblings rushed inside, eager to discuss the possibility of adopting the dog with their parents. Their mother, however, was less enthusiastic. She had never been a fan of pets, especially dogs. Their father, on the other hand, was more open to the idea though he set some firm ground rules. If you want to keep the dog, he stays outside, their father said, raising an eyebrow at the children. He won't be allowed inside the house, no matter the weather, and you too will be fully responsible for him, feeding, walking, cleaning up after him. If you can agree to that, I don't see why not. Nora and Nolan looked at each other, weighing their options. It seemed like a fair deal, and both children were eager to have a pet. They agreed to their father's conditions and immediately went back outside to invite the dog to their porch. However, as they tried to move him closer to the house, the dog kept returning to the spot where they had first seen him, near the entrance to their neighborhood. He's stubborn, Nolan said, watching the dog as it padded back to the original spot. Maybe he just likes it here, Nora replied, Let's let him stay where he feels comfortable. They decided to let the dog settle where he wanted and instead made plans to build him a cozy shelter. They gathered some supplies and bought a dog house, which they assembled with care. We should give him a name, Nora suggested as they worked. How about Titan? She asked. Why Titan? Nolan raised an eyebrow, intrigued. Because he's stubborn, like a rock. No matter what we do, he stays where he wants, Nora said with a grin. Nolan chuckled and glanced over at the dog. Titan it is. But we need to wash him and get him a collar so people know he has a home. What if someone thinks he's a stray and takes him? Nora hesitated, looking at Titan. Well, he might not be ours forever. Maybe his owner will come for him someday. The two siblings gave Titan a good bath, scrubbing away the dirt that had accumulated on his fur. By the time they were finished, he looked much healthier. That evening, Nora and Nolan researched Dobermans, discovering that Titan's breed was known for being protective and loyal, but also for barking more than most dogs. I hope he stops barking so much now that we've taken him in, their mother remarked as she passed by. Nora and Nolan shared the same hope. Titan had been barking incessantly every night since his arrival, and the noise was starting to wear on the family. They could hardly sleep, and it was becoming difficult to focus during the day. If he keeps it up, we'll have to take him to the vet, Nolan said. Maybe there's something wrong with him. That night, after dinner, Titan lay by the front door, his head resting on his paws. His food bowl sat untouched beside him, and despite the kindness the family had shown him, he seemed unusually downcast. Nora retreated to her room to finish her homework but she kept an eye on Titan from her window. His presence made her feel a strange sense of security, as if he was there to protect her. As midnight approached, the familiar sound of Titan's barking filled the air. Nora peered out the window and saw him thrashing around near the entrance, barking as if he was trying to alert them to something. It was heartbreaking to watch, and she wondered what he was trying to communicate. What is it, Titan? Why are you barking so much? She whispered to herself, unable to shake the feeling that the dog was desperately trying to tell them something. The following morning, the children took Titan to the vet as planned. The doctor gave him a thorough examination, but found nothing physically wrong with him. He wasn't injured or sick. However, the vet discovered something unexpected. Titan had a microchip, and when they scanned it, they learned that he belonged to a family living in a town several miles away. I'll contact the owners, the vet assured them. They might have been looking for him. 
Nora and Nolan were relieved to have some answers, but also a bit sad at the thought of losing Titan. In the meantime, they were told to take care of him until his rightful owners could be reached. The next few days were no different. Titan continued to bark day and night, and the situation was growing unbearable for everyone, especially their mother. Even Nora and Nolan, who had initially been excited about having a dog, were beginning to feel frustrated. They had imagined that having a pet would be fun, but Titan's behavior was becoming a mystery they couldn't solve. On the fifth day, as they were walking home with Titan, they overheard neighbors discussing the disappearance of a young girl from a nearby community. She had been missing for over a week, and her disappearance was all anyone could talk about. I hope they find her soon, Nolan said quietly, shaken by the news. Nora was deep in thought. There was something strange about the timing of the girl's disappearance and Titan's arrival. He had shown up just days after she had gone missing. Do you think Titan senses something we don't? She asked, glancing at the dog. As if in response, Titan suddenly began barking furiously and broke free from Nolan's grip. He darted towards an elderly man passing by, his teeth bared as if ready to attack. The old man, startled, turned and ran, but tripped over the sidewalk in his haste. Nora rushed to grab Titan's collar before he could cause any harm, while Nolan helped the man to his feet. We're so sorry, they apologized profusely. If you can't control your dog, why do you even have one? The man snapped, rubbing his bruised knee before limping away. Nora and Nolan exchanged confused looks. Why would Titan go after that man? Nolan wondered aloud. I don't know, Nora replied, shaking her head. He's just an old man. Back home, the children shared the vet's findings with their parents. Their mother was at her wit's end and gave them an ultimatum. Either Titan stopped barking, or he would have to be surrendered to a shelter. Determined to keep their dog, Nora and Nolan decided to watch him closely that night. After their parents went to bed, they crept outside and called Titan to them. Surprisingly, the dog obeyed. But just as the night before, he began thrashing and barking wildly. Something was clearly bothering him, and this time, he seemed desperate to lead them somewhere. Maybe he's trying to show us something, Nora whispered. Without warning, Titan charged down the street, barking all the while. The siblings exchanged worried glances and followed him, curious to see where he was going. Titan led them to a rock wall covered in vines and leaves, where he stopped, wagging his tail as if he had found what he was looking for. What is it, boy? Nolan asked, looking around but seeing nothing unusual. Before they could investigate further, a car appeared in the distance, and they quickly hid in the shadows. They watched as a man limped out of the car, carrying a sack. Nora's heart raced as she recognized him. It was the same old man from earlier. The man swiftly moved some branches and uncovered an entrance to a hidden cave in the rock wall. He disappeared inside, and moments later, the siblings heard a faint cry. That wasn't the cry of an old man, Nora whispered. It sounded like a girl. They stayed hidden until the man emerged from the cave and drove away. Once he was gone, they rushed to the entrance and peered inside. What they found left them speechless. The missing girl was tied to a chair, bruised and unconscious. Titan wagged his tail excitedly, sensing that help had finally arrived. Nora wrapped her jacket around the girl while Nolan called 911. Their parents arrived soon after, horrified by what their children had discovered. The police secured the scene and an ambulance rushed the girl to the hospital. It was Titan, Nolan explained to the officers. He led us here. He's been trying to tell us all along. By morning, the police had tracked down the old man using the license plate number Nolan had memorized. He was arrested and confessed to kidnapping the girl to get back at her father, a lawyer who had ruined his life. Titan had tried to protect the girl from the start but hadn't been able to reach her until now. The next day, Nora and Nolan visited the hospital to check on the girl, whose name was Cynthia. They were surprised to find Titan standing guard by her bed. Cotty, Cynthia's mother cried, 
rushing over to the dog. We thought we lost you. Cotty? Nora asked, confused. He's Cynthia's dog, her mother explained. They went missing together. Titan, or Cotty, as they now knew him, had never left his owner's side. He had tried to alert everyone to her location, but had been misunderstood. Thanks to him, Cynthia was saved. The siblings had to say goodbye to Cotty, knowing he belonged with Cynthia. But a few days later, as Cynthia recovered, she and her family visited the Finns to thank them for their help. You're lucky to have such a brave dog, Nora said, smiling. Well, we've adopted our own now, Nolan added, showing off their new Doberman, Skye. Though Titan had returned to his rightful owner, his bravery had left a lasting impression on the community and the Finn family. Sky was a new beginning, but they would never forget the dog who had saved a life.